My name's Chris Welch, and uh, I'm, I'm fourth quarter. What does that mean? Well, at least part of me is fourth quarter. That's a St. John sort of personality. Um, it's Matthew type, Mark type, Luke type, and John type. I'm some kind of mix between Luke and John. Now, the big thing about that is John types are used to prophesying and then shutting up, really. Not, not really gabbing a lot. Uh, outside of certainly not within Christian things so I don't actually like presenting myself in this way but I thought I'd be different I would just go ahead and speak anybody has seen any of my videos I just begin I, and it's not and, and, and the problem is that other people take that as oh you're not really interested in humans <laughs> I'm, I'm very interested in humans <laughs> but I, I don't like contaminating um, anything the burden of what I've got to say with establishing kind of like a a human rapport because um, I'll leave that to everybody else everybody else is really good at that but but the the burdens that I'm trying to get out into words I don't I don't really want want that to be you know watered down at all but it doesn't mean that I, I don't like anybody <laughs> And, and that's what's happening with with the John type of person. Now you don't you don't know that because John type of people behave like Matthews, Marks, and Luke's. So they see who they're speaking to, and they try and imitate the speech pattern and the uh, the type of delivery that a Matthew, Mark, Luke like. And that again, you see, we get we get then accused of being false. But you see, that's that's the thing. We're straight in and you can't take that. We're only really interested in truth, <laughs> We're really communicating truth. And you're interested in establishing first who it is I'm speaking to. Do I like him? <laughs> is he the sort of personality that I can relate to? For us, it's irrelevant. <laughs> what we want to hear is truth. <laughs> I want to know with Trump, because I like him when he's speaking truth, but I want to know his background and if he's just deceiving us. The satanic ritual abuse people say he is. I mean, that's an example. So <laughs> you really want to know who it is you're speaking to, but you can't get that entirely from just watching personable people now. MK Ultra is just too good. You get that? MK Ultra programs people. Well, we get it in the singers. That's my most obvious in the singers, and their performance is immaculate. But it's not entirely them doing it. It's a it's a it's a split personality game. That people controlling them. They have handlers. They have handlers. So. Do you see, you start to see the thing. I'm really only interested in getting some truth out, especially when we're talking about the Bible. And this Psalm 1 is amazing. It's, it contains so much. Now, with the thing with the Psalms is, remember, demons and the enemy didn't really show up. They're mentioned in the Old Testament, but there's, there's false spirits, wrong spirits, or God sent a wrong spirit among them or, or whatever however that happens so that's kind of like the the certain human expressions that are made in the old testament that don't get made in quite the same way because everything becomes starts to become very clear and the the devil gets outed by baptism in the holy spirit so as soon as jesus is baptized in the spirit everything is outed so for example here how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. We go into that. But, but basically, uh, blessed is the man who doesn't sort of get sucked in by Genesis 3. People living in Genesis 3, in living in Genesis 3 separation, living swanning around thinking there are gods in their own right we don't get involved with that well the trouble is we do everybody does but 
But I'm saying that if we're walking in guard, we're not we're not getting sucked in by this guff. <laughs> and this what it's describing is how it increases as well. You, you know, you you don't walk in the council of the wicked, so it starts off as council, nor stand in the path of the sinners. So sinners have a path, and that's not that's no so more true than the occult. The occult have a set path. And it begins, choose Freemasonry, it begins by looking very nice, as though it's helping people, as though it's charity, as though it's networking, as though it's very nice. At the bottom levels of all occult, it's mostly all about people and helping them and looking good. But it's a path. A lot of people, I, I wanted to say this as well, I'm sorry we're not really getting into the psalm here, but I'm trying to clarify things, that since Jesus came and was baptised in the Spirit, and he got, and then his purposes were to get people converted, that means have his Spirit living and resident within them, and then baptise them with power, with the power of the Holy Spirit, all this reveals... Satan has been quite happily living as us, using us as his avatars all this time. But we never know. It. You never saw it in the Old Testament. You know, it's not really spelled out. But you actually get people in the street when Jesus is walking down the street. <laughs> You're the son of God. Blessed are you, the son of God. But it's in a twisted voice. It's in a voice that puts everyone off. And, and, and Jesus just had them be quiet. That, that people find out for themselves. So there's this path, and loads of people are, are starting to see where this path of sin leads. And it re literally, literally, you know, the word is coming out that Tom Hanks is one of the um, most powerful child traffickers. And we, we all thought, well, he's an actor, he's doing all these nice films. And all these other people in Hollywood. It's all been bleeding out, slow but sure, slow but sure, in a trickle. But actually, to be in the position they're in, they've had to swear to Satan. They've had to get in so deep that they've performed some ugly sacrifice, blood sacrifice, to get the position and to get the fame. I think they used to say it had to be 20 million plus, it's probably more than that. But to get 20 million plus a year or a film, or whatever, you have to be, you have to have done these rituals. So, that doesn't necessarily mean, does it, that we've got the best actors. We might have the best MK Ultra process, but we're not necessarily got the best actors. So it's a path, and now, as more Satanists realise, it's not the cosy lower lower echelons and helping people and white magic and all this kind of or even new age it's not it's not there's loads of people went to the alternative view conferences which were begun to start trying to fathom out what's really going on in the black ops of the dumb dumbs the deep underground military bases of of the secret societies what they're getting up to what the bankers are really getting up to what the program is so they have this alternative view conferences but no small number that turned up were new age ladies ladies new age ladies by 2015 a lot of them are converted because new age doesn't work because new age doesn't solve the situations all around you, only coming out of the wrath state into Jesus Christ makes the, the very things around you change. And that's all in Proverbs 2. That, sorry, that's all in the Old Testament 2. That's Proverbs 3. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make straight your paths. But if you go the path of sinners, it seems to end up with slicing up and eating babies. It's all being, it's all coming out on the net. It's all coming out, isn't it? It won't come up on the um, the main media because it's all run by those people that do that. 
So it's all silenced in the main media. It's not a new thing, by the way. Doreen Irvin was converted from witchcraft, and although she didn't spell out it was actually the Queen and Prince Philip and other aristocratic figures, she did say aristocratic figures. She couldn't, to get the book published in the 70s, she couldn't name names, but she was very clear. It's media, it, all the top echelons, government, um, very rich bankers, it's these people. And they're all meeting together at these very things. And she was a powerful witch. So she went to see all these things. So, so I, I, I don't know. But that's, that's what it ends up as. As uh, Jeanette Archer has, has put out now on the net. She's described in detail what her life was like from 5 through to about 13. But particularly in terms of Windsor, 5 till 9. Raped every year by the Queen and Philip. So it's a path. It's a path. We want to get out of that path. So many are leaving now that they know they're starting twigging. This, this occult stuff is awful. It really is everything the Old Testament always said it was. To get out of the path of sinners, and you don't, and the end result is you end up like a stationary so you've begun by walking you then slow down to a stand and then the last bit of energy is taken out of you you're sitting just scoffing and you're scoffing to try and assuage what you in your life could have done had you been in god had you been faithing things of his projects into being and had you been walking with him and so to to make yourself feel better you just scoff at everyone so these things are real and they just get unpacked even more than in the psalms they're more real than real but if we go the lord's way and it talks about the law but even the word law has changed because the law was something yes given by god but it was kind of external coming through teachings through leaders and everything like that but Although it looks that way, it still is, you know, churches all over the world are still backward and they're still not New Covenant yet. Nevertheless, they're t saying good things, they're good things, and they're coming from the law of God, apart from where they're twisting the law of God. But the law now is the law of the spirit of life. Ever since Acts 2 in Jerusalem, the law changed. Now it's the power of the Holy Spirit making it work in our lives. It's coming from within us out. We're born again and we're baptised in the Spirit. It's so much better. So when we go back and read the Old Testament, we see the word law. It means a whole deal more now. It's, it's like 3D to 2D. It's like it's power instead of just a noddle, noddle thing, anything in your noddle. It's inner power coming out of streams of living water. So his delight is in the law of the Lord. It sure is now, because it's not just two tablets. It's it's you it's the realization that God is the source of all things. Outside of him, yes, on earth it looks like error, error. But the point is, it's not life flowing. It's not life, capital L, flowing. That's the point. We call it sin. But our idea of sin is only like good or bad. It's so subtle. Basically, you can do as many good things as you like, but if you're not flowing in God's life, well, it's like do-gooding, isn't it? It's forced. It's, it might be a good, good set of actions you do, but boy, doesn't it stink? It's not coming from life. It's not coming from God. It's not coming through your heart in a spontaneous outflow, is it? And everyone picks that up. So now we meditate in the law, but because 
we're, me we're meditating on it because it opens up and opens up and opens up. The ways of the Lord open up, open up. And you see, wow, this is unbelievable. This is amazing. And he'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. So if we root ourselves and ground ourselves in God, we find it's not two steps forward, one step back all the time. It's whatever we touch, whatever we do, it's blessed. Because it's not us doing it. It's coming from Jesus. It's coming from God's new spirit. And the wicked are not so. And you will find that. They look very established. They look, at the time, they're doing these things really, really important. But, well, it, it's, it's really, you know, he's not completely forgotten about. But, it, but among the young people at that ball game, do you see that picture of Mick Jagger at the ball game? And he's sitting there. He was hiding a bit under a hat. But absolutely nobody. No, you think about what Mick Jagger's done in his life and the millions been affected by by him as these um uh, 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 rolling stones nobody 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 even knew who he was i, I, I thought it's a staggering picture because to our generation he, you know we he certainly would be looked at <laughs> but anyway and i'm i'm not also pointing him out as as um wicked um, what i'm trying to say is that that as as bigger thing as we do whether good or bad it's the god things that get absolutely planted it's what's when knee that really is being remembered in hudson taylor and everyone's streaming from china to hudson taylor's birthplace and the i've forgotten was that oldham or one of those places up there and nobody in the town hardly knows why are you coming here for them, they don't even know what, who Hudson Taylor is. Our media will never talk about it because our media it doesn't talk about genuine things. This is genuine. It literally changed China. Hudson Taylor, Watchman Nee, and all the underground Christians. There's millions of people now know Jesus personally in China. And the communists hate it. So while we're being established in, you know, we, we're, not, we're not just going to be blown away like wind. The countries that are established are established in righteousness. Even the ones that don't know the Lord, the ones that behave righteously are established in the deeds of doing the deeds that are in their heart of a good conscience. Even the ones that know, don't know Jesus. The, the Khazars, or, or before them the Cathars, or the, they were a tribe. I don't think they were even all of the tribe, but they were the portion that everyone started calling name stealers. And people think that a lot of those name stealer tribes, and it goes way back hundreds of years, but that pattern is still in, in Israel to this day. They've sort of taken over from the Orthodox Jew. But they've come here too. They come, they're everywhere. And they're name stealers. They're not establishing their own reputation. Their reputation gets worse and worse and worse. So they just keep, keep stealing someone's name and then moving on. So these are big concepts. These are big things. It's it's super real. It's not that it's old fashioned. The the Holy Spirit and the realm that we're moving into, which is the third level realm of one John two. It's not just even being converted. It's knowing the three stages of growth in one John two, and that's where we're going to have churches that are actually churches and not synagogues. Every church on earth is a synagogue. It's run by one person who blabs at you for 20 minutes to 45 minutes. That is the definition of a synagogue. It's not a church. Church is ecclesia. It means something in Greek. So well, as we start moving in more and more reality, 
it will literally be like this. The wicked will not stand in the judgment. Not because everybody's <laughs> looking at them <laughs> down their nose, but no, the sheer power of God sorts people out in that atmosphere. He comes upon people. An occult, so many occult people, like Doreen Irvin actually, as a witch, went into, I think it was a meeting in Bristol or somewhere, and she got converted. She went to disrupt the meeting. But she did have a bit of a foundation in her youth of attending a Sunday school. And it was like those verses became electrified in the presence of God. And, and she knew, she knew this was it. This was the truth. And she converted from witchcraft. She went there to disrupt the meeting. So I don't know how, it, how David meant it, whether people were just... Um, floored by the presence of God and then left. But but now in the abundance of God's grace and mercy, people are coming into the presence of God and just repenting and just turning round because they start seeing who God really is. Just wanted to share that with you. This is a living this is a living psalm. This psalm is packed with stuff. <laughs> 